Welcome to SVG TV News for Wednesday, June 7, uh, 2017. I am Rochelle Batiste with the details. Uh, this country's National HIV AIDS Unit is lamenting on the challenge of promoting safe sex as the recent National HIV AIDS statistics continue to climb. Uh, this comes as a National HIV AIDS Unit for the second consecutive year launched its Carnival HIV Awareness Safe Sex campaign under the catchy slogan, Catch the Vibes, Not the Virus. Uh, delivering her opening remarks at today's launching ceremony, Director of the National AIDS Unit, Ferocia Roach, said they have been promoting safe sexual activities over the past 30 years and emphasized the unit's commitment in providing support such as prevention measures, treatment and care in an effort to achieve the UN AIDS global mandate of having an AIDS-free generation by 2030. Roach stated that with the nation's recent AIDS statistics, it is clear more work must be done. Condom use has always been and still is the best way for sexually active persons to prevent the transmission of sexually transmitted diseases including HIV. And as the HIV epidemic has evolved over three decades, the use a condom message has remained a cornerstone of prevention, but stubbornly, the number of new infections in St. Vincent and the Grenadines show that we have struggled to always translate this simple message into real life. As in 2016, 32 new HIV infections were recorded and up to May of 2017, a total of 14 new infections were recorded, bringing the cumulative total of HIV cases to 1,547. Meantime, country representative of the Pan American Health Organization, Paho Anik Wilson, reiterated the need for the continuation of monitoring and evaluation of such outreach programs as she outlined the 2015 HIV AIDS statistics. Global HIV statistics indicate that 18.2 million people were accessing antiretroviral treatment for HIV. 36.7 million people globally are living with HIV and this is 2015 data. 2.5 million people became newly infected with HIV and as I said this is all 2015 data. PAHO continues to work with countries to strengthen surveillance and information systems as it relates to monitoring and evaluation of their STIs, which is sexually transmitted infections, and HIV AIDS program. In fact, we're going to be looking at working with St. Vincent in that for the evaluation later this year. Stating that this carnival season, a vigorous approach will be taken in an effort to promote safe sex. Assistant to the director, Azonia Vanlo, said that they will have a more pronounced presence on social media. We will continue condom distribution at shows and events and run advertisements through print, television, radio, posters and electronic billboards. The posters and graphics have been reconceptualized and redesigned as song and a new television adverti advertisement have been added as well. We will again be using social media as a major point of our campaign and even right now today we have our little um, Facebook and Instagram live running right now so that's a part of you know adding to the campaign for this year and we will be including the facebook live streams some interactive sessions safe sex tips as well as continued targeted social media marketing madzat one of this year's major partners and our campaign ambassador is working with us to promote the campaign on other platforms as well including on his personal website and social media pages he is also working closely with us to make our Carnival Monday and Tuesday outreach even more effective. And local soca artist Rayon Madzad Primus is happy to collaborate with the National HIV AIDS Unit with their 2017 Carnival campaign as a brand ambassador. According to Primus, it is not always about the music. 
I decided I want to get involved physically, you know, in, in whatever social cause, uh, uh, any disaster relief that may, we may need from time to time. And that's why I decided, hey, let's start this carnival. We know there's the Catch the Vibe, Not the Virus campaign. We know that the Ministry of Health does this, the National Aid Secretariat. And my, my team, Dawson here, and I, um, we approach um, Nika, Az Azania, and Ms. Roach, and we ha we've been having meetings for the past well, months. months. <laughs> <laughs> you know, been putting stuff together, and I'm really excited about about what we have been doing and what we can do going forward. One of the things, one of the contributions that I've made um, today, the 7th of June, we officially release a song. It's called Catch the Vibe. Focusing its attention on the reduction of non-communicable diseases through healthy eating, the Ministry of Health has commenced a week of activities to commemorate Nutrition Awareness Week 2017. The 2017 Awareness Week of Activities, which is guided under the theme Healthy Eating and Active Living, Play Your Part, Be Sugar Smart, will look at some of the factors which contribute to the rise in non-communicable diseases here in SVG. In his address to officially kickstart the week of activities, Health Minister Luke Brown stressed on the reduction of sugar consumption and said the ministry will continue to promote good nutrition and physical activities in an effort to promote a healthier St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We'll shed light on the risks that an excess dietary intake of sugar poses to health. We will educate the public on common food sources of excess sugar and ways to reduce dietary intake of too much sugar. Our efforts will be informed by the national food-based dietary guidelines that were approved by Cabinet in May 2016 and promulgated on World Food Day of that same year. Guideline 5 is reduce the intake of sugar, use less sugar sweetened drinks and foods. There is also a draft national child nutrition policy which elaborates measures geared at keeping sugar consumption within acceptable limits. A healthy diet has several components. There should be one adequate consumption of fruits and vegetables. Two, the avoidance of excess intake of free and added sugars. Three, no excess intake of dietary salt or sodium. Four, no excess intake of total fat, saturated fats, or trans fats. And five, no excess intake of processed meats. Minister Brown Caution about the consequences which the consumption of excess sugar can have, such as obesity. Too much sugar can cause dental cavities, weight gain leading to obesity, type 2 diabetes, and some types of cancers. The activities of Nutrition Awareness Week 2017 fit nicely into our build-up to the celebration of the 10th anniversary of the Port of Spain Declaration against non-communicable diseases in September. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines is committed to creating an environment in which it is easy to live a healthy lifestyle. We are considering increased taxes on sugar-sweetened beverages, directives for the reduction in the sugar content of processed foods, restrictions and stipulations on the advertising, marketing and labeling of food and beverages in accordance with international best practices, proposals and recommendations. The health minister spoke on the government's efforts to educate Vincentians on the dangers of high sugar consumption, noting the collaboration with the Ministry of Education targeting schools across the country. And one of our intentions is to introduce nutrition fact labeling that specifies the sugar content of certain foods. We are also considering limits on the sale of unhealthy food and drinks in school zones, controls on alcohol and tobacco products, and a myriad of other measures. We will strengthen and consolidate our community nutrition education program and embark upon other health promotion undertakings to provide the public with pertinent information on relevant subjects. The Ministry of Health partners with the Ministry of Education on the delivery of the school feeding program. We train the program staff in nutrition standards and sugar reduction measures. We advise that sweetened drink mix be eliminated from the menu 
and provided information on the sugar content of some foods commonly offered for cake sale. Broadly speaking, we help to educate school staff, students, and food vendors on measures for the reduction of sugar intake. Activities for Nutrition Awareness Week will continue here tomorrow with a primary school's public speaking competition at the Methodist Church Hall and concludes on Saturday, June 10th. Antonio Jose Renzena de Castro earlier today emphasized the importance of the diplomatic relationship between St. Vincent and the Grenadines and Brazil. The Brazilian ambassador was speaking at a signing ceremony of a technical cooperation agreement at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs conference room earlier today. Uh, de Castro pointed out that cooperation should not only be about formulating diplomatic ties, but also how each country can benefit uh, financially. South-South cooperation is a vigorous instrument of Brazilian foreign policy and an essential part of our commitment to the economic and social development of our neighbors and friends. Brazil's international technical cooperation takes the form of actions to share knowledge, technologies, good practices and experiences with our partners in a two-way street and goes beyond mere solidarity with the cooperation partners serving as a promoter of economic development. Technical cooperation is one of the main modalities of international development cooperation and an instrument to strengthen Brazil's relations with other countries with an emphasis on economic and social integration. Noting that he is pleased that this country and Brazil has had diplomatic relations since the 1980s, Ambassador de Castro said that formulating a relationship was also about respecting the internal affairs of a nation. Respect for national so sovereignty and non-interference in domestic affairs. Non-profit and disconnected from commercial interests, such cooperation is demand-driven and free of impositions or conditionalities. We have been engaged in cooperation with the Caribbean for a long time through CARICOM, OAS, CELAC, but it was high time to start regular bilateral work with St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The agreement signed today is the first step towards strengthening and deepening cooperation between our countries, giving us the necessary legal framework to contribute more objectively and immediately to the economic and social development of our peoples. Minister of Foreign Affairs and Deputy Prime Minister Sir Louis Straker outlined how impressed he is by Brazil's thriving agriculture industry and expressed an interest in signing more agreements with the South American country. Remarkable progress in regards to the creation of producer cooperatives aimed at adding value to production and increasing the income of small farmers. We are very glad that this day has come, and we look forward, Your Excellency, to stronger ties and more a signing of more of these agreements with your country. We need to develop these initiatives so that we can have the necessary technical assistance to develop our personnel and our economy here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We thank you very much for being here and for signing this agreement with us. When addressing the issue of climate change, it is very important that during deliberations on the issue, attention is paid to the impact it has on gender and gender roles, especially in regards to females. Uh, that's the charge from Prime Minister Dr. Ralph Gonzalez at the opening of the 2017 Caribbean Climate Outlook Forum, which wrapped up here last Friday, June 2nd. The forum, which consisted of a series of meetings, sought to provide weather and climate forecasts for the 2017 wet hurricane season, as well as train delegates from across the region. Outlining that weather and climate conditions do not have an ideology, PM Gonzalez said, given the fact that everyone stands to be impacted uh, by the growing global phenomenon of climate change, much attention must be paid to identifying those individuals who stand to be adversely affected most. 
we have to in our deliberations look at a special uh, have a special reflection on gender and very much single mother households we also have to look at men also but it's very important that we address this question within the overall subset of issues because my experience as the minister responsible for disaster preparedness and as the minister of finance a lot of people who come to me for material assistance are mothers I don't need a survey to tell me about that my and I understand the reasons because of the dominance of the woman inside of the management of the household in our social structures Meanwhile, making mentions uh, to his government's commitment to in, in addressing the issue of climate change, Prime Minister Dr. Raul Gonzalez spoke on the recent move by his government to impose a 1% disaster levy as of May 1st, 2017, noting that the 1% tax increase seeks to further provide support in building the nation's resilience against climate change. The Prime Minister highlighted his government's initiative to ban the use of styrofoam products, especially in the food industry, while at the same time imposing a duty-free concession on the importation of biodegradable food containers. He outlined that while most business persons are very cooperative uh, with the two newly imposed measures, there are some business operators who choose to use the measures as justification to unreasonably increase their prices. So, we'll have to pay 50 cents more for a biodegradable container. But the person who's selling the food will put it up by $5. Of course, most people may absorb it. And then the 1% is 1%. Out of a hundred cents is one cent. But there are some people when they hear one percent, the one percent means a dollar on the cheapest thing. And we have to be mindful of some unscrupulous people who want to gouge out the customer eyes. And the customers must tell us and complain and let us do something about that because I'm not going to sit by and watch the consumer get gets his or her eye gouged out by some unscrupulous person. I'm not going to allow that at all. In other news, two men here are now nursing injuries at the Milton Cato Memorial Hospital after the vehicle they were traveling crashed into a utility pole in the New Montrose area near the Central Water and Sewage Authority headquarters sometime around 4.35 p.m. last evening. According to reports, the driver Louis Brown of Chapman's lost control of the vehicle, which then led to the collision. Also on board of the truck was conductor Renique Primus of Diamonds Estate. Vincentians are being urged to conduct verification searches in an effort to reduce the chances of enrolling in education institutions that are not accredited. The advice comes from Senior Education Officer in the Accreditation Unit, Decimal Hamilton, who spoke on Sister Station Magic FM Sunday Brunch Program. You tell us the name of the institution and possibly the, if you were very clear at the time, the program of study you wish to engage in and then you leave that with your contact information for us um, we can do the search for you what we have happening though is that a number of persons are not prepared to wait um, because there are scholarships being offered yes. for this particular one and therefore, if they're offering scholarships and bursaries, it must be good. I know of an institution right now, they offer a lot of scholarships, but you have to pay up front. I don't know if that makes sense. So we have been inundated with quite a few persons requiring of us 
and virtually saying to us, well, if they're so popular and they're offering all these things. So the student will come to focus more specifically on what you're asking, and we will do the, well, not the leg work, the finger work. Hamilton lamented that it is unfortunate that so many Vincentians are making callous decisions to enroll in programs without checking the institution's accreditation status. Yes. Um, we have a number of persons who have been offering training at different levels. They are not registered. They have, they appear to have very little interest in registering their services because once they register this, well, attempt to register their service, it simply means that the National Accreditation Board has to go in visit. and do that visit that Mr. Kittels and Ms. Adams would have detailed. Mm -hmm. And it's really unfortunate that um, people are not paying attention. They are using their cash, they're investing in these opportunities, if we can call them that. And um, at the end of it, they're asking for us to accredit their certificates. That's, it, that, that's what we get. Mm -hmm. Can you accredit this for me, please? Cannot. So it is really advisable that you put some thought into any investment, whether foreign or local. And it's, it's really troubling when I, when I see the local ones because sometimes I... I can't begin to figure out why people who should be responsible parties are not just simply doing what is expected of them. Chairperson of the National Accreditation Board, uh, Dr. Rosalind Ambrose, in echoing Hamilton's appeal, stated the importance of exercising caution and conducting research. And that, that's more so for post-secondary higher education institutions. It's not like going to secondary school. It's a big investment. Um, the toil of studying towards that degree, um, the time you're away from home if it is a, not an online program. So these things we really need to measure those is to, yeah, the work, the money, and all that. You really need to be careful that you have made a good decision. And a good decision means doing a little research, doing a little legwork, looking on the internet and checking, re um, coming to investigate at the accreditation unit to help you if you need to look a little bit further into that institution or that program so you don't make that mistake from the very beginning. The Accreditation Unit and the National Accreditation Board will be observing World Accreditation Day on June 9th uh, for the first time here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, this will take the form of the launching of the National Accreditation Board's website at the Peace Memorial Hall at 10 a.m. The launching of the website is one activity in a series of activities organized by the National Accreditation Board leading up to the recognition of World Accreditation Day on June 9, uh, 2017. On Friday the 2nd uh, June of June 2017, the National Accreditation Board held an open house at the Red Cross headquarters. The focus of the open house was to assist the public in becoming familiar with the process of and a need for the early verification of their academic qualifications. Funding for the establishment of the website was obtained from the European Union uh, through the Caribbean Development Bank's standby facility. And in other news, two cohorts of participants enlisted under the Support for Education and Training SET program were on Friday recognized during the 2017 SET program award ceremony held at the Methodist Church Hall. The ceremony, uh, which saw certificates being presented to cohort three participants, also served as a welcoming forum for the fourth cohort of participants who have successfully been selected into the SET program, commending the participants for the successful completion of and selection into the program, Cabinet Secretary uh, Katian Barnwell noted that since its commencement in March 2014, some 600 persons have been directly impacted by the SET program. It's really about the interns. It's about not just the ones who are here, but those who are in the first two cohorts. It's about what they have been able to accomplish throughout the life of this program what they have achieved, the standards that they have set, the fact that they have left an indelible mark on the, on the persons with whom they have interacted, 
and I would just like to commend them because I think very often, too often, we do not give enough commendation to our young people. We are too quick to jump to the things that are not so positive. And we need to highlight the fact that we have young people, many, many of them, the majority of them, who are quite willing either to work, to be productive, to improve themselves, to improve the circumstances of those around them, their fa extending from their families, communities, and to this nation. In his feature address, Prime Minister Dr. Raul Gonzalez made mention of his government's aim to seek a higher platform for the provision and accessing of education for the youth of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, which he said is seen through the SET program. You, you have a parents who seek to put you on a higher level. And this government has made phenomenal allocations of scarce resources to your well-being and development. <laughs> Carried out an education revolution, which is still in the process of being unfolded and consolidated. You can get in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, first world, the critical care for persons between the ages from birth to 17. Free. Don't feel sorry for yourself. And thank God for your blessings and count them one by one.